Good morning, everybody, and thanks for checking out this episode of Anderson's Outdoors. It is the end of June here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and things in the garden are really starting to take off. So I wanted to just put out a little bit of an update video on what we're growing this year and why. It's a little bit different of a garden for me this year than in past years. Um, part of what I decided to try this year was to grow things that um, I've got a few things you know that are kind of just the normal garden fare such as tomatoes um, which are really fun to grow and the varieties that I've chosen this year I'm really excited about but the majority of our garden is focused on things that uh, will grow well in my climate here and that we can store and use for weeks or months uh, after harvesting them. So we've got things such as uh, a New Mexico heirloom bean that I really, really enjoy growing. It's a type of bean that's been grown here in the Rio Grande Valley for hundreds of years. Um, I'm also growing some more cacai pumpkins, which I really enjoy. Those store so well and the seeds are really delicious and nutritious. I'm also growing the Magdalena Big Cheese Squash, which is a type of winter squash that will, like most winter squash, it'll just keep for quite a while. They form pretty large pumpkin-like uh, squash that uh, I just think will be really good to add to soups and stews and things like that. So let's go out into the garden and I'll show you what we've got growing and how everything's looking right now at the end of June. So you might think at the end of June in New Mexico that everything would be really far along, but actually, um, you know, we get freezes late into the spring. And so end of April uh, and into May is, you know, when a lot of stuff goes into the garden. And so right now things are taking off, um, but we've still got quite a ways to go here for our summertime garden. Um, over here I've got a uh, flame grape that's doing really well and some raspberry bushes that are <laughs> not doing all that awesome. Those over there look pretty good, but I think everything, I think these raspberries are quite stressed. Um, I just think it's a little too hot and dry. It's just a, a tough climate for these raspberries, at least for me. I haven't been able to get them to, to produce super well yet. But these are the Kakai pumpkins that I love to grow. Um, if you guys have been following my channel for a while, you have seen me grow and harvest these for years on end. And I really like these pumpkins. They make a small pumpkin that's really, really pretty, a nice and striped pumpkin. Um, the reason that I grow this type of pumpkin is for the seeds. If you've ever had those little green pepitas, those little green pumpkin seeds, those are not seeds that came out of, you know, it's not like someone cracked a pumpkin seed and took out the inner part. Nope, those are grown um, in these varieties of pumpkins right here. And when you cut them open, those seeds are just ready to eat inside. Uh, they're a hullless seed, I guess is what you would, would say about those. Um, most varieties of pumpkins produce seeds that have that hard, shell the big white hard woody shell and that's called a hull and uh, if you want to get the little nice tender green pumpkin seeds like you'd put on your salad um, this is a great variety to grow in your home garden because that's exactly what these will produce when you cut these pumpkins open they are full of those little tender delicious green pepitas so that's why I like to grow these and again this type of pumpkin um, well most pumpkins obviously store very well so I want to grow as many as I can and keep them for eating the seeds through the winter um, I've got four trellises of heirloom beans I've got one here in the middle of these pumpkins that's gonna grow up right there I've got some along this trellis here which is gonna hopefully become like a little bean tunnel um, so and right next to these beans I've got my um, sweet potatoes which I've got more than twice the amount that I started with last year 
this right over here these are the magdalena big cheese squash um, i'm not sure if there are any flowers yet on these plants or if it's just putting out crazy vines right now but what beautiful leaves i mean look at the the cool coloration on there that spotted color it's so neat but the vines look nice and healthy i just am not seeing any flowers yet but like i said i'm not worried about that because we've got all of july august september and into october before we start running into a possibility of getting a freeze so plenty of time for all of these things to you know put on flowers and fruit and all of that um, i've got one more trellis of beans here and more sweet potatoes this is my goji berry bush over here these little berries it is such a prolific bush it just produces these sweet berries all summer mm, delicious trying some tomatillos this year just for fun and uh, over here I've got my few tomato plants that I've got growing and my fig tree that's one of my four fig trees it's actually looking pretty good and there's a few little figlets starting to form on there so hopefully later in the summer I'll be able to show you guys a good fig harvest um, the other thing that I'm growing for storage that I hope to be able to throw in with a lot of soups and stews are these uh, sweet Spanish onions and yeah, I'm really excited about these guys. I have not been so successful at growing onions in the past, but I'm gonna give it another try here and see how we do. Got many more months ahead in this summer growing season before we have to even start to worry about winter coming in and freeze and all of that stuff. So, but harvests are yet to come. Right now is time to get these plants growing and growing and growing. So again, thanks for watching this episode of Anderson's Outdoors. I hope you guys are doing great. Take it easy and we'll catch you next time.